Hey everybody, it's Chris and Dez Show. I'm Chris. And I'm Dez. And today's the day you've all been waiting for. You have. You didn't know you were. Uh, but you are. We're going to make a list of our top 10 Pixar films. Okay. Right? Okay, this is the most difficult thing we've ever had to what, do in our whole entire life. so hard. You should have heard the groans <laughs> that were coming because we... We love, okay, first of all, let's, let's first be, all. A, what a testament to Pixar that yeah. all of their films were like, wow, oh, 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 I love that one, I love that one, and I can find good in all of them. Yeah. I will say, there were a few, especially when we were talking about this, as of late, that I was like, yeah, the oh, most I, can get rid of that. I can get rid of that one, I can get rid of that one. A little bit easier. Uh, and I'll say, I, would, I enjoyed them, even ones that aren't my list. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed them. And, again, if your favorite is not on the top ten, that doesn't mean we didn't like it. It just means that <laughs> this is just personal, and it's so subjective, Absolutely. obviously, really Pixar is. list. It and is. I but. hate subjective lists, because I'm a, when I see a list, Des knows no one <laughs> likes lists more than I do, I'll tell you. But I want to be like, this is the thing. Definitive. This is the best, this be is definitive. the best. Yes, and that's, it's just not. It's a movie, it's up to people's preferences, and what strikes me isn't going to strike him, isn't going to strike you. So, it's okay. But we are just informing you of our top ten. Here we you go. Let see if yours match. Number 10. It is your number 10. My number 10. Monsters, Inc. Um, well, come on. Who doesn't love monsters? Who monsters are... Inc. They're so cute and scoochy. And that little girl. Boo. Boo. Loved it. My number 10 is The Incredibles. Okay. Again, a movie that is fantastic and it's really good. Uh, there, there's a, a two coming out. Yeah, there's two coming out. Next. P Pixar has been doing a lot of sequels. Well, you know, once you find a good franchise, and they already have all the characters in the computer, so it's real, a lot easier to yeah. do that. Right. Number nine. A Bug's Life. This is the first Pixar movie, and I was so good. Because also it has Phyllis Diller. It's the second one. Oh, Toy who's Story's, the first Toy one? Toy Story's first. Oh, Toy Story's first? Mm -hmm. I thought Bug's Life was before Toy Story. Mm -hmm. Toy Story's first. Too. All right. Well, <clears> then, <throat> it was one of those up there. And it has Phyllis Diller. Come on! And Julia Louis-Dreyfus. And Julia Louis-Dreyfus. Uh, my number nine is Ratatouille. Good one. It's two, two L's? I sure. think so. Uh, I just love... Okay, for one thing, I love little animals like that I in real life even uh, and so going with a rat to me is a fantastic way I love that and I love the storyline and that he wants to he's a great chef but he's a rat and it's like he's not supposed to be around food obviously but he has the heart for it and he's so good at it and I love the guy that he like works with He's so cute I can help you there uh, and it, it's great and you know really there isn't a bad guy per se in Ratatouille which I think is yeah, Pixar is good at being like there's this guy who is a critic but then at the end he's you know his eyes are open to the truth about this stuff yeah, and so okay. it's they're good at doing that like we don't need this villain sometimes we do have a villain yeah. uh, but sometimes it can be a little ambiguous with who's good who's bad kind of mentality I like that too yeah number eight cars uh Okay, what I really liked was it was a whole new world of vehicles, right? So it was uh, this great whole new place to go. It wasn't real. Like Ratatouille has a little realness to it because it's a person in food. But this one's a whole new place. And I liked the story. I liked the old guy, the old car, and Duh. him learning from the old car. It was so good. Paul I Newman. Liked, Paul Newman. I love Paul Newman. Uh, my number eight is Finding Nemo. Again, this like this for one thing, Finding Nemo for me is two things. Number one, it is gorgeously beautiful. The colors oh. in that movie. I remember sitting there and watching like this is one of the most beautiful films I've ever seen. It still holds up and it still is that way. And Ellen DeGeneres, which <laughs> I can't even talk about. Ellen is Dory. To me, Ellen is Dory. Like for sure. That's it. That's all there is to say. Um, I'm glad they gave her her movie, Finding Dory, which I didn't like as much as Finding Nemo, per se, but uh, I, I, I just love that comedy in there. And the sharks. I really like the sharks, too, and their comedy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, number seven, The Incredibles. Incredibles. Super.
superheroes. Desmond's my people. Superhero. These are my people. I loved it. I just loved it. The back story and the how did they become superheroes and they fell in love and they had a superhero family but they really get banished and oh I loved it. Yeah, I was gonna say I, my favorite one of my favorite parts about superhero movies about not superhero movies, is the Incredibles yeah. is Edna Mode. I love Edna. Come on, Edna Mode. <laughs> She's so good. What else can you say, right? Uh, my number seven is Toy Story Two. And I know a lot of people love Toy Story 3, and I really... Okay, those Toy Story movies, man, they're, they're fantastic, aren't they're they? Great. Another uh, one, they're coming out with another four, one. Four, right? Uh, but there's something about two, and I, you know, I think I know what it is, is that I love the character of Woody and the character of Buzz. I think they are, like, easily endearing, likable characters and are brilliantly played by Tom Hanks and Tim Allen. They, I, I don't even like seeing them at Disneyland because I'm like, you don't, aren't Tom Hanks, you aren't Tim Allen, don't talk like that because you, you don't talk like that. Uh, I just want him always. They have to, it has to be Tom Hanks and Tim Allen. Uh, and I love the dynamic there. I love the second one because I love this idea of Woody having to decide, like, do I stay with this boy who has loved me and whom I love? And there's no doubt Woody loves Andy. He always does. Uh, but or do I go with my people, these toys that I'm a part of this Western Woody's Roundup toy? Um, the dynamic there and I love Mrs. Potato Head <laughs> and so she's big in this second one right and she gives Mr. Potato his angry eyes um, <laughs> and monkey chow like for what? For the monkeys of course I love it <laughs> it's so wonderful uh, and that dynamic and I love the character man I love all these characters Rex and Ham and Slink oh Slinky Dog I love Slinky Dog <laughs> uh, this is great and then there's a song Randy Newman Good grief, that man is a genius, right? And almost all these Pixar movies, he's written this music for because he is a genius. Um, but the song, When Somebody Loved Me. Stop it. I know. Come on. And I'm like, ooh. Because that is a beautiful song. And Sarah McLaughlin has that haunting voice or sings it. But that backstory of Jesse is like, oh, no, no, it's no, too no, much. no, no. It's too much oh, for the heartstrings. No. It's too much. That is, that is Pixar, no one. They know. No live action movie. No other animated movie does pulling on your heart like Pixar. Right. We'll sure. get to up later, but Oh, don't forget. <laughs> okay, so number six, I have Ratatouille. Good one. For all of those same reasons of how wonderful it is. Good one. Uh, and then my number six is Monsters, Inc. I think the characters of Mike and Sully are two of my favorite in film history. I love their dynamic together. Who doesn't like Billy Crystal and John Goodman? I want to know their names right now. Uh, <laughs> because they are, they're just phenomenal. And together, oh, this is about Monsters Inc. is what Des said she was loving about cars. Like, this isn't a real world. This is yeah, a world of monsters. Brand new, yeah. And Pixar's so good about like, okay, if this is a world of monsters, then they eat something different then they read something different then they drive a different type of car then we have the, instead of saying walk don't walk it's stalk don't stalk because they are monsters and they stalk it. i love those little details that makes me so happy and <laughs> pixar doesn't just make movies and incorporate whatever they are like down yeah, to no, every detail every goes thing. together which is why also disney loves them because they are great at merchandising for those same reasons uh and disney Shout out to Disney. We haven't mentioned them, but obviously they have been in, tied to all these movies and now they own Pixar. Right. <clears throat> Number five. Okay. So look. It's this little robot. I can't even talk about it. Who is just <clears throat> doing his job cleaning up this little... <sighs> He's so adorable. And then he meets... Eve, and then, oh, this is a great story, yeah, and it so really actually is poignant to our society, and where we are as a whole, and where we could be going, and it says, a, I like what this movie says, yeah. a lot, and it says it so well, and it really, you can hear the message because of how great the story is, and the focus of it. Falling. Run away. Don't get me started on that. <laughs> uh, my number five is A Bug's Life. 
for the reasons Des was saying too. But again, it's another one of like, we're going to create this world and it's going to be bugs. Okay, so what does that mean? All right, well, rain's going to look different to them. Yeah. Food's going to look different to them. Mm -hmm. What do they struggle with? What is their big concern? Like, oh, they have the grasshoppers take their food. Okay, they got to build this thing. Okay. Bug, right? And then there's these dramatic bugs who now are going to pretend to be heroes, whatever. Phyllis Diller, Julie Louis Dreyfus. Come on. What else do I need to say on. about it, right? Uh, and even like David Hyde Pierce says, the stick, come on, people. <laughs> so we're talking about, right? And I think there are a few movies in general, and definitely Pixar, that have as flushed out supporting yeah. characters. This right. cast is like, these bugs are this, this P.T. Flea, right? John Ratzenberg is in all these movies, right? Uh, and he's fantastic in all of them. Uh, is P.T. Flea, this like circus ringer guy, and it's just... All these other good characters. Toy Story it does another one with those fleshed out characters. But I, I, I love uh -huh. Upside. Right. Love okay. Number four. Inside Out. Now this might be because I teach junior high children that getting inside their head is just a foreign land. It is another world in there and how they think and what their priorities are and how self-involved they are and this movie just hits every note perfect in my opinion about how these teenagers think and work and are just kooky and who can understand what they're having to go through and it, this was just a wonderful movie about childhood and coming to the end of childhood and I just thought it was so good I love psychology so very much. I teach it. Uh, but I, I'll say Inside Out was one of the first ones I crossed off on my top ten list, not, sure not to include. Because there's, I don't know what it was, there's some disconnect for me. And I don't know if it was just when I first saw it, but I've seen it a thousand times. I have children. Um, <laughs> but there's some disconnect. I... I don't know if it's because we keep going in and out of her head. Oh, maybe. Riley, that I don't care as much as I should. Like, Wally. I can't tell you about how much I care about Wally. I I, I have trauma over things that are happening to Wally because I love him so much. Well, I didn't care about Riley as much as I cared about Joy and her quest for what she was trying to accomplish inside of Riley. Right. I cared about Joy and what she was trying to do. And the imaginary thing. Oh, Bing what? Bong. Bing bong. You had me at Bing Bong. Yeah, you Bong's had great. me at Bing Bong. I will say Bing Bong's a great character, oh too. Oh, my gosh. But, and it's, don't get me wrong, Inside Out is a fantastic mm. movie. And compared to almost every other animated film, it's way, way in the top. Uh, but there, I, don't know what it, I don't know what it is. It's okay. I know it's something inside of me that disconnected. It's the same for everybody. What's inside my brain that made me disconnect? That's exactly. What's so your number four? My number four. This used, this used to be my number one for a long, long time. <laughs> uh, okay. <clears throat> I think that's low for you. I know, I know. Okay, just saying. I will say this. Oh, uh, we have two seconds. Wait, wait. If the first, if the first fifteen minutes of Up was the whole movie, it would be my number one movie of all time. Oh, for sure. Uh, because that love story makes me want to cry just thinking about it, and it is no movie can make you cry like Up. That when he's sitting alone at the funeral Stop. with just the one balloon. Stop it. Stop it. Cannot. And it's a great story of this old man and this kid relating together and being. Best Buds, uh, which I absolutely, I just love. I knew that was going to happen. Sorry, everybody. Okay. Uh, number three, I have Toy Story 2. Okay. Primarily for that song that he writes. Mm -hmm. When somebody loves you. Okay. Randy Newman. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to get a lot of flag for this one because I know not everyone likes it like I do. And some people are like, how can you like it more than Inside Out. Well, I will tell you why. Uh, for one thing, maybe part of it's sentimental. That's my Charlie's, my daughter's favorite movie of all time is Monsters University. Not Monsters Inc., Monsters University. But let me tell you, no one watching this film has seen Monsters University the amount of times that I have seen. <laughs> I can promise you that. And the fact that I could see Monsters University 18,000 times and counting and still laugh out loud, I think that's the key is that some of these movies have deeper emotional ties. Up, Wally. -E. Those are deep. Those are getting yeah. you emotionally. Right. right? Yeah. Toy Story Two. Uh, but Monster University is flat out 
hilarious. It's just funny. The character of Art, the, the guy, I cannot. I, I can't. <laughs> He's so funny. He's so funny. He's funny. <clears throat> That's one that didn't make my list at all. Uh, now we're up to up again. Those first 20 minutes. Just, you can't. You can't. You can't. Not. And they, and they uh, affect the whole rest of the movie and endear you to this man. Because if it just started after those 20 minutes, you wouldn't care about this guy one little bit. Right. And it's beautiful, uh, again. The, yes, the balloons, beautiful. the colors. I can't. Yeah, that's true. Uh, my number two is Wally. Okay. <laughs> I, I love animated characters, right? I'm a Kermit the Frog fan. I am Buzz and Woody fan. I love the characters of ever. Wally is one of those, like, my heart, my heart oh, loves Wally. The fact that he does a dance to Hello Dolly with his little... I cannot. I can't. I, come on, I people. Cannot. Come on. And when he's watching, like, it only takes a moment. He's like, Stop it. And he's like, I can't. And his little <laughs> cockroach friend that stays with him and he runs him over and he still lives. I... Oh, I can't. I, I the don't little know, I plant. Do. It's about the little plant the little plant that he saves. He's Wally. Oh. And it is the. Can you think about this movie has no dialogue for the first 15, Seriously. 20, 30 minutes? And it is brilliant. It's, and it's absolutely and it's hilarious and great. And it, you are it's fantastic. In. Yes, absolutely. Mm. I can't believe we have the same number one. I, well, I, most, I think a lot of people. Oh, will. I hope so. Because that. Oh, no. I'll move real quick. Okay. Keep you talking. move real quick. <laughs> This movie changed the landscape of animated movies. This did it. Toy Story, when Toy Story came out, I thought Bugs Life was first. I don't know why. But when Toy Story came out and this Pixar whole thing started, it just affected everything. Yeah. I, it was so brilliant. It Brilliant. I mean, for some weird reason, we like to put animated films as like a separate category. I dare you to hold Toy Story up to any live action film, any Martin Scorsese, God, The Godfather. It's uh, it's to me, it's up there. It's that brilliantly well made. The script is so funny, not for just kids, but for adults. The acting, it's beautifully done. Great so acting. Good. The storyline is something we all can relate to. This jealousy of wait, I was here and like I feel rejected and not loved and like so much emotion. But then we end up loving each other, these two, and then it's like it, it's wonderful. It's fantastic. And, and again. Oh, okay. So how can you hear You've Got a Friend in Me and Not Smile, Randy Newman, you genius again? Uh, <laughs> it, great. Fantastic. We love Toy Story. It did change, and it did change everything. It did. Absolutely. There's Toy Story and then a bunch of people who tried to be like Toy Story. That's really what it is. Yeah. So. Right. Sure. So that's what we think. Let us know what All you right, think. Yeah. Try not to like cuss us out or anything because we didn't know your favorite, but <laughs> and tell us what you think. Like, my favorite is, you know. Yeah. Let us know. Cars 2. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or whatever your favorite, your the good favorite dinosaur. Was. Anyone? Good dinosaur? Anyone? Nope. Okay. okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye.